This video is used to demonstrate how to perform a visual field test using the Germ Tangent screen. So, what is it? The Germ Tangent screen, more commonly referred to as the Germ, is a kinetic perimetry test that maps the patient's visual field. So you may be wondering, what is a visual field? The visual field is the extent an individual can see up and down, side to side, whilst looking straight ahead. This is also referred to as your peripheral vision. In a normal healthy individual, the monocular visual field should extend approximately 60 degrees upwards, 75 degrees downwards, 60 degrees towards the nose and 100 degrees out towards the ear. The binocular visual field is 120 degrees due to the 60 degree overlap of the nasal visual field of the left and right eye. The blind spot is a physiological scotoma that exists approximately 15 degrees temporally and about 1.5 degrees slightly inferior to the horizontal meridian, where the optic nerve leaves the eye. The blind spot correlates to the location of the optic nerve as a result of a lack of rod or cone receptors. There are two types of perimetry testing, kinetic and static. For kinetic perimetry, a stimulus is chosen depending on the needs of the patient. This type of testing maps out the whole extent of the patient's visual field while creating isopters which are required to locate the presence of a scotoma. It also consists of a moving target controlled by the examiner. In contrast, a static test consists of a stationary target where instead of a stimulus being chosen, the location is. It is a measurement of the sensitivity level of a specific retinal area within the visual field, creating a hill of vision. Jaquare's hill of vision is made up of multiple isopters to show the sensitivity of the retina. The closer you go to the fovea, the more sensitive the retina, therefore the peak. An isopter is an area of or line of equal vision or sensitivity. You need a minimum of two different stimuli to judge the presence or absence of an absolute scotoma, however three isopters are normally ideal. The extent of the gerund visual field maps out an individual's 25 to 30 degree visual field. In some instances, if the patient cannot see the central white target, the gerund is modified to meet their visual requirements. The orthoptist is responsible for adding two diagonal lines to make an X and the patient is asked to look at where they think the middle of the two lines would intersect and to fixate there. This could be used for patients with central scotomas or macular degeneration. The gerund is normally utilised when we suspect that the patient has a visual field defect. It may be performed in diabetics, glaucoma patients, malingerers and patients who have lesions affecting the visual pathway. The equipment required to perform the germ consists of the germ tangent screen, stimulus and wand, black pins, an occluder, a tape measure, a black cloak for the examiner, and the recording sheet. Prior to testing, we need to select the correct stimulus. We typically utilize a white stimulus for maximum contrast against the black tangent screen. The sizes of the stimuli correlate to the patient's presented visual acuity. The lower the V8, the larger the target size. Typical sizes include 20mm, 10mm, 8, 4 and 2 as shown here. A patient with 6x vision is commonly tested with a 2 or 4mm target, whereas a patient with 624 vision would be tested with a target of 10mm or bigger. We can also utilise a coloured stimulus for testing. These are used for patients with visual pathology. The colours reduce the intensity of the stimulus and can uncover subtle field defects which may have not been noticed with the white stimulus. Typically, a red stimulus is utilised for neurological problems such as compression to the visual pathway and also used for testing of the macula. We can also utilise a blue stimulus, which is typically used for diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma. Finally, a green stimulus can also be used for macular degeneration. Now let's watch an examiner and equipment setup. 
Firstly, the examiner will begin by disinfecting the hands with antibacterial gel as shown. They will then swab down the eye patch used to occlude the patient's eye with an alcohol wipe to ensure there is no cross-contamination from patient to patient use or contamination from surfaces. The gerum wand then needs to be assembled by twisting the three parts together. Following this, the examiner will then select the appropriate stimulus size and color to test for the suspected visual field defect and visual acuity. In this portrayal, the 4mm white stimulus is used as it is a large, higher contrasting target that is easy for the patient to identify against the black background. For examiner setup, it is required for the examiner to wear a black cloak in order to blend in with the dark and black tangent screen. It is also necessary for the lights to be dimmed during testing to increase contrast and reduce distractions from the external environment. Seen, would you like to come through? Sure. Now let's watch an orthoptist perform a germ consultation. Please take a seat. I'm Jordan. I'm going to be your orthoptist today. Today we're going to be performing a visual field test, which is how far you can see out to the sides and up and down while looking straight ahead. We are going to be using this test here, which is called the Jerum. Here the orthoptist is using a measuring tape to ensure that the patient is one meter from the chart. The patient is asked to hold the end of the measuring tape to their eye to ensure that their line of sight is in line with the central fixation target. It is crucial for the examiner to check if the patient is aligned correctly with the central fixation target. The patient's eye that is not being tested is occluded. Typically you would test the right eye first so it would occlude the left eye. Ensure the occluder is on correctly and that the patient is not peeking from the covered eye. At the beginning of the test, the examiner is required to test at least two points of the visual field to ensure the patient can follow instructions and is able to carry out the test. The test procedure involves moving the stimulus from a point of non-seeing to seeing. While the orthoptist is maintaining their gaze on the patient's fixation, the stimulus is moved from the outer field in towards the inner fields and asks the patient to let them know when the stimulus first appears and if it disappears at all. Let me know if it disappears at all. A pin is placed in the location where the patient can first see the stimulus. When mapping out the blind spot, the examiner will ask the patient when the stimulus first disappears. Can you please let me know when the white dot first disappears? It has disappeared. So you can't see the white dot there? No, I cannot see anything. Once this location has been determined, it is used as a reference point and the patient is required to let the examiner know once the stimulus reappears. It is important to map out, at minimum, six points for the blind spot. We then move on to mapping the extent of the rest of the field. Let me know when you can first see it. I can see it. Let me know if it disappears at all. Great. As seen in the blind spot, when a patient has a visual field defect, it is necessary to find a reference point, which is where the patient can first see the stimulus disappear, and map out the patient's vision loss by going from non-seeing to seeing. At the completion of the gerum, static points must be tested to ensure the examiner has not missed any scotomas within the visual field. Per standard, at least one static point should be tested per quadrant. Can you see the white dot here? No, I cannot see anything. Can you see the white dot here? No. These are the results that Jordan the orthoptist has gathered when testing Miss Dean's right visual field. When recording the results on the gerum, it is important to first write down the date you have performed the test as a point of reference and to keep track of the patient's visual field over time and to clearly note any progression. Then we write down the patient's details, their full name and date of birth to indicate whose visual field the results correlate to. Patients can also be denoted as PX. We also include the assessor's full name so that we know who is liable for the testing results, which can be denoted as AX. It is also important to state which eye has been tested and whether the patient was wearing any glasses during testing. For example, if Miss Dean wore distance glasses, 
she would need to wear them during a one meter assessment. It is also noted whether the patient's fixation was steady or wandering as this would affect the result's accuracy. In addition to this, the stimulus is also recorded. The size and the colour is recorded as well as the testing distance in a fraction. The fraction consists of the numerator being the stimulus size in millimetres and the denominator being the distance in millimetres as well, with the first letter of the colour being written besides the distance. Here, the colour of the stimulus Jordan had used was white, therefore W is recorded. The orthoptist then records the results as seen on the germ tangent screen identically to the sheet. The shaded in areas denote areas of visual field loss. As seen here, Miss Dean demonstrated a left hemianopia or the right eye. This visual defect further indicates that Miss Dean has an underlying problem causing impairment to her visual field. This could potentially be a lesion compressing on Miss Dean's visual pathway. Final interpretation of the results show a left hemianopia of the right eye, which is caused by a lesion of the right optic tract. The benefits from performing the germ tangent screen include the test being non-invasive allowing for patient comfort, a variety of tests being available to suit the patient's visual requirements, the test being able to be performed at different distances accounting for visual acuity, it being widely common in clinics, being cost effective and easy to operate, the fact the test can effectively identify a malingerer patient. After performing the test at 1 meter, the examiner can move the patient back to 2 meters. The results received from a malingerer will differ to the results obtained from a patient with an organic vision loss and it being easy to monitor fatigue by maintaining fixation on the patient by the examiner. The cons of this test include it being subjective, which relies on patient honesty and competency. Language and communication barriers may affect individuals' performance by limiting their ability to carry out the test to their best ability by not understanding the procedure. It is also difficult to standardize the environment of the test for each person. Lighting and timing may vary in duration or intensity of the stimulus are difficult to standardize. There are some common errors that could occur while performing the germ. These include inadequate patient instruction, as it is very important to ensure that you explain what you will be testing the patient on, the purpose of the test, and all the details of how to perform the test. An uncooperative patient sometimes shows a patient that can be disinterested, distracted, and not providing accurate responses. It is very important that you encourage and comfort the patient and provide them with a break if needed. This ensures that they provide the most accurate responses, thus correct results. An improper stimulus selection ensures that as the clinician, you have selected the most appropriate stimulus for testing. Whether it is a particular color or size according to the patient's visual acuity or retinal sensitivity in relation to particular defects. Whilst performing the test, ensuring that the patient is continuously focused on the central dot is vital. Encouraging them from time to time and watching their eyes avoids wandering fixation. As an examiner, it is important to be attentive whilst performing the test as inattentiveness will demonstrate a lack of care towards the patient and therefore provide inaccurate results by missing vital information. It is crucial to ensure that the examiner moves the stimulus at a constant and steady speed. It is important to not go too fast as the patient may be tempted to look away from the central dot to the stimulus and can also lead to missing a defect in the visual field. Going too slow can cause the patient to zone out, thus cause fatigue. Incorrect setup can include many things such as incorrect distance between the patient and the tangent screen and the eyes not being leveled to the central dot. These will alter any possible defects on the visual field by shifting it in a certain direction or being smaller or larger than its true size, therefore providing inaccurate results. It is also important to ensure that the patient's eye that is not being tested is properly occluded as the monocular visual field is being tested. These errors could impair the testing procedure and therefore provide us with distorted results and increase exposure to adverse health risks. Therefore, it is crucial to ensure that we avoid these common errors and be extra attentive when performing the germ to provide high quality care. Thank you for watching our video on how to perform a germ tangent screen test.